All of my life I have watched liberal conservative movements in our nation. And so after the years, the right or the conservative movement has ended up today exactly where the left used to be. The right is where the left used to be in issues of faith and family and freedom and responsibility. There was a day when right meant the right to life. It meant physical responsibility. It meant family values. But the right following the left, the conservative following the liberal, and though there is a difference between the two, we find ourselves a long way from where we started in this country and who we once were. Today we stand here shamefully in debt to many countries around the world. Now we are in debt to countries that they're starting to influence our policy and our life. I, for one, want our government to govern our people. I'm not interested in China telling us what to do. The right has followed the left to the place that we have a daily attack against marriage. And when I say marriage, I speak from the Word of God. That's when one man's married to one woman for a lifetime. We have a daily attack against marriage and family values. We've come to the place that we, without common sense and foolishly, have said to children, you can't sing away in a manger or silent night, but you need to sing Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, I don't have a problem with singing about Frosty and Rudolph, but Christmas is not their birthday. Christmas is the birthday of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've come to the place that we've outlawed the Christmas songs, the manger scenes, the Bible, prayer, Christian symbols, and one court even said that our very, our very uh, pledge to the flag is unconstitutional. The leadership in many of our cities, states, and nation now make decisions without any regard to God at all. No reverence for the Lord's day and little to no respect or fear for the Word of God. And so today we find ourselves, as Isaiah said, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. And they are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Well, I am here today to cry restore. Yeah. We need more than a conservative movement that follows the left and ends up where the left used to be. We need to turn to the right and head back to the standard. Yeah. If a 1957 Chevrolet was brought from a junkyard with the windows broken and the side panels rusted, the tires flat and dry rotted, we wouldn't work to try to stop the rust or conserve the broken windows from being broken any further or pump the tires up every day. No, we would look at a picture of what that 1957 Chevrolet looked like when it rolled off the assembly line and say that's what we want uh, this car to look like. Well, it's time that we quit looking to see who's to the left or who's to the right and we go back to the standard and say, let's make America look like what it looked like when she was founded. You say, Pastor, how do we, how do, we do that in America? Three things. Number one, we must get back to the standard. You say, what is the standard? Who is right? We've come to the day when every man does that which is right in his own eyes. I contend today the standard for America in its founding is the standard for America today. And that's the old 1611 King James Bible that is the standard. America was not founded on books of secularism. America was not founded on the Communist Manifesto. America was not founded on socialism and Marxism. This nation of ours was founded on the very Word of God. The Declaration of Independence declares that our rights are, are God-given rights. And they're easy to see and to observe. 
Our coins do not say in government we trust. Our coins do not say in socialism or secularism we trust. Our coins loudly proclaim in God we trust. America was founded as a Christian nation with the Bible as the standard. Let me say second of all, not only should we get back to the standard, we need to get back to respect for God and the man of God. I believe America is due for some old time, leather lung, window rattling, shingle pulling, sin naming, call it like it is, black and white, plain statement, preaching from the word of God. I believe that's what America is right for. And may I add, I think it's time that the elected official get back to church and get back to listening to that kind of preaching that shaped this country in the first place. On February the 7th in 1954, President, President Dwight Eisenhower was in church on Sunday morning. That's where every elected official ought to be on Sunday morning, not just before the campaign, but two years after they've been elected, they still ought to be in church on Sunday morning. Sunday's not time for meet the press. Sunday's time for getting ready to meet God. Sunday morning's not the time for Fox News special. Sunday morning's the time to get back to church. It's not time for ball games and sports. Sunday's time for going to church and hearing the preaching of the Word of God. On that morning of February the 7th, Pastor Dougherty preached that America is different than other nations. And he stated in his sermon, sermon specifically that godless nations of humanism and communism are different than America. He preached that morning that our pledge of allegiance ought to be changed to include two more words, and those were the words under God. And to that, that morning, the president said, Amen. That was February. By Flag Day, June 14, 1954, our pledge of allegiance was changed by just two words but two words that distinguish us from communism, two words that distinguish us from atheism, two words that distinguish us from Marxism, those words under God distinguished America as a Christian nation. Since that time, for nearly 50 years, our children have been, de have been declaring that our nation is a nation whose citizens have rights that are God-given rights, and all of that was a result of preaching. Amen. We have watered down our faith and religion. Come on. We hide. We check to see if it's all right to be a Christian. Yeah. We've come to the place that we're condoning sin in the name of Christianity. The Bible doesn't condone abortion, it condemns it. The Bible doesn't condone sin, it, co it condemns it. The Bible doesn't condone safe sex called, or immorality called safe sex. It condemns it. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You say, but preacher, we're not the majority. I want to remind you it doesn't take the majority as far as numbers are concerned. It takes a righteous remnant. And when God gets on their side, Side. That is the majority. And then let me say in closing, it's time for us to get out and work. We need to vote for candidates and work for candidates that represent Bible-based values this nation was founded upon. Not just to hear what they say, but to look and see what they've been doing. Anybody can say their right to life. I don't know what their record is the last few years. This year, 2010, is a year of opportunity, or should I say responsibility. Responsibility takes away, uh, a responsibility adds to opportunity and says, I must do something. We do have candidates that represent the values and virtues of faith in God, family values, constitutional freedoms, and financial responsibility. I want to say to you today, get involved. Pray for the candidates. Encourage others to stand and work for candidates who represent these values. And I'll say in closing, the footsteps that are being heard today, the liberals that hear the footsteps, I want to say, it's not your imagination. They're real.